Hello, welcome to MTG Pro Tutor. I am Sean Penrod, your host, and today we're going to open this M15 booster pack and evaluate. Sorry, whoa, we are going to open this Cons of Tarkir booster pack. I'm still used to M15. Cons of Tarkir has come out for about a week now, so get with the program, Sean. And uh, we're going to evaluate the cards inside. Let's dive right in and see what Cons of Tarkir has to bring us. Not M15. All right, first thing I do, take out the marketing card, which is worthless today. The land and the rare. Ooh, villainous wealth. What does this do? So it is X uh, Sultai, black, green, blue. Target opponent exiles the top X cards of his or her library. You may cast any number of non land cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them without paying their mana cost. Yikes. So how big does X have to be for this to be worth it? I would say four or five, probably five. And by that point you're up to eight mana. Ah, I don't know. I don't know, seems like a trap. Seems really strong, but also seems like a trap. Let's see what else we have here. Wetland Sandbar, a two, one for two. Not that impressive. Valley Dasher, a two, two for two with haste and he attacks each turn of Able. So not bad as far as uh, uh, your two drops go. Erase is exile target enchantment for one white. Uh, there's not a lot of enchantments, so definitely not high up on my list. Tygum Scheming, look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest back on top in any order. So you don't get to draw a card, you just get to fill your yard. Okay, so this is useful if you have some delve cards because then you get however many you put in there plus Tygen Scheming and then you, you could be able to play your delve card uh, this turn even if you don't draw um, one of those cards. Dragon Scale Boon is great once you've already gotten some of those Obzon Lords running around. You, one, you give one creature two plus one plus ones. Molting Snake Skin. I don't really like this. It's an enchantment that it does give your creature power but it doesn't give it toughness it does give it regenerate, but uh, I don't know. I would have to see this, see this in action. You can still get two for one if you don't leave the mana open. All right, Keru Dreadmaw. You exile a creature and get life equal to its. Uh, sorry, you sacrifice a creature and get life equal to its toughness. So I guess you could set up some neat blocking tricks, tri tricks where you would block and then get some life. But it, it does cost five mana for a four four defender, so you, you can't even attack with this guy. Oh, look at that Ponyback Brigade, and it's kind of smudged at the top. That's interesting. Uh, so Ponyback Brigade is uh, the Mardu Morph card for five. So it's a two two. Hold on. You can play it for Morph, so you can play it for three. You can turn it face up for five when Ponyback Brigade enters the battlefield or is turned face up. So there, there you go. Put three goblin creature tokens onto the battlefield. So you get five damage for five mana. Fine, so that's pretty good. Oh, this one's also kind of smudged. Long shot squad, hound archers. They are three, three for four mana. Um, and each creature with a plus one, plus one counter gets reach. And you can tap two and them to give them a plus one, plus one counter. So. There you go, so it gives all your creatures reach. So that's kind of neat. Swift Water Cliffs. This is an enemy pair um, refuge, so enemy pairs can go in two, two uh, clans. They support two clans. This one will support Jeskai as well as Teemer. So um, keep that in mind. That's, uh, that's good to know. Winter Flame. Choose one or both. I've, I've seen this uncommon a lot. Tap target creature, Winter Flame deals two damage to target creature, so you can do one or both. Ideally, you tap a creature and kill one of their morphs, right? So that's kind of cool. Horde Ambusher is a 2-2 two, two for two. Whenever Horde Ambusher blocks, it deals one damage to you. So in other words, this says, I don't want to block. And the morph cost is reveal a card, reveal a red card from your hand. You can flip it face up. When Horde Ambusher is turned face up, target creature can't block this turn. All right. And Frontier Bivouac. All right, this is the the uh, Teamer um, Triland that enters the battlefield tapped. So I like I like these. I, I take them pretty highly. So oh man, that said, I don't want to move in on Villainous Wrath. 
uh, right now, although it does seem very interesting. I don't, uh, I'm just nervous, I guess. I'll take Frontier Bivouac uh, from this pack because I think the mana fixing is, is really important to take early. So I would take Frontier Bivouac. Um, that keep, gives me three mana colors, so that's really cool. I like the Longshot Squad next. I like the Ponyback Brigade as well. So maybe Frontier Bivouac followed by Ponyback Brigade. Those would be my, my top ones. Uh, Villainous Wrath, I guess, maybe uh, pick three or so. <laughs> so let me know what you think of this pack. Um, would you take Villainous Wrath first? Well, sorry, Villainous Wealth first? It just seems too hard to cast, you know? Uh, you need three different colors, and then how much? How many do you need for it to be worth it? Again, I think five. And with that, so by turn eight, um, I, I don't know. If you're not dead by then, do you really need this card? So that's kind of my thoughts. Thanks so much for watching this video. You're awesome for doing so. Uh, yeah, I'm Sean Penrod, and we'll see you in the next pack.